In 1990, a fragment of obsidian bracelet with a highly polished surface and complex morphology was discovered at a Shigli Hayuk in Turkey. Archaeologists were captivated by the artifact's extremely high-quality polished surface and precise symmetry. The decision was made to employ tribological analysis in a study of the technological steps involved in the manufacture of the oldest obsidian bracelet ever identified. The group of researchers from the Laboratory of Tribology in Lyon and the National Center for Scientific Research in Paris have analyzed the fragment of the bracelet and discovered that mechanical devices for grinding and polishing were used in bracelet production. Moreover, the tools used to obtain the complex form of the Ashikli Hayuk bracelet indicate higher technical input than any other objects previously found in that area. The surface finish of the bracelet, which is very regular, resembling a mirror, required the use of advanced cutting and polishing techniques capable of obtaining a nanometer scale surface quality worthy of today's telescope lenses. But the problem is that this bracelet is dated at 9,500 years old. It was a time of the late Stone Age with hunter-gatherers who were living back then. The time of the stone tools, with no metals and ceramics discovered yet. The study was published in the Journal of Archaeological Science in 2011. The bracelet was made from high-quality green obsidian, which means it's made from volcanic glass. Obsidian is very firm and brittle. It therefore fractures with very sharp edges. That is why this material is very easy to use for producing cutting and piercing tools, and it has been known by ancient people on different continents. But while it's relatively easy to fracture, obsidian is extremely hard to cut. It's true to say that obsidian has 6 from 10 hardness by Mohs scale and it is harder than steel. It means that one can relatively easily produce primitive objects from obsidian by simply fracturing it with the help of a stone hammer. But if you are going to create something like this bracelet, a stone hammer is the wrong choice. You cannot achieve such high symmetry on the object and the surface quality by ordinary pecking. That means that you're supposed to rotate obsidian blank and cut precisely all the extra volume of the material in order to achieve the symmetrical annular ridge. And if you want obsidian that was cut and not fractured during the rotation, you should work at high speed rotation. It was discovered that the formation of concentric striations on the bracelet surface with consistent orientation point to the use of mechanical devices for grinding and polishing. Such mechanical devices are well known nowadays. This is lathe. With a lathe, it's relatively easy to create an object with symmetry about rotation axis. But easy only if you are familiar with this technology and know how to employ it. Do hunter-gatherers have something like that? The answer is no. Moreover, you're supposed to have tools that are harder than steel and are capable to cut obsidian with a high quality. This bracelet is definitely related to the group of the ancient Anatolian artifacts with traces of machine tools on them. And this is not an isolated product. Ancient Anatolia is very rich for ancient machine tool traces on its historical objects. It's worth mentioning that expeditions of the Laboratory of Alternative History to Turkey in 2015 found a lot of such traces throughout ancient Anatolia. They also visited another Neolithic settlement, Alajga Hoyak, located roughly 300 kilometers north. At this site, they've discovered examples of ancient Cyclopean polygonal masonry, which was built with the same style and technology as in Peru. Talking about similarities with Peru, it's worth mentioning that manufacturing quality of the obsidian bracelet from a Shikli Hayuk was very similar to those obsidian coils from National Anthropological Museum. But let's talk about similarities a little bit later. 
So what was discovered during the bracelet's microtopography analysis? Lawrence Astruc and her colleagues analyzed the bracelet fragments using extremely powerful computer technology developed for industry in order to study of friction, wear, and lubrication of the solid-to-solid -solid interface. This method is known as multi-scale tribological analysis and has been adapted for the study of microtopographic features of archaeological artifacts. They seek to identify every single operation performed on the surface of this ancient object. And the results were astounding. Measurements indicate that the control of the bracelet's symmetry during the manufacture was very high. The symmetry of the central annular ridge is extremely precise to the nearest degree and nearest hundred micrometers. An annular ridge divides its width into two unequal parts and described as zones A and B respectively. Microtopography of each zone was analyzed in detail. Asymmetry indicates by differences in the radiance of curvature of the ridge slopes and the width of zones A and B is related to variations in surface state. Zone A, a smooth, highly polished surface without peculiar defects, and Zone B, a comparatively rough surface with longitudinal striations. The nature and distribution of the wear marks indicate that three techniques were employed consecutively to shape and finish the bracelet. But most importantly, evidence of use of mechanical rotation tools were found. Firstly, these are concentric striations, which run parallel to the bracelet's edges and the annular ridge. Secondly, these parallel striations are in groups with the same depth and direction on the obsidian surface in different parts of the bracelet. These striation patterns are a clear evidence of mechanical rotational tool used during the bracelet's manufacture. On the ridge, the depths and widths of the striations are similar and they are parallel. At 4 micron scale divergence is zero. These striations are very similar to traces of rotational cutting tools, with the brave grains fixed on the functional parts of the tool via a bonding material or another method. We can see the parallel striation patterns with the same depth and direction on the different parts of the bracelet. These groups have different angles. That means that either the polishing tool was fixed and artisans used different movements and abrasive materials for making the bracelet, or the bracelet was fixed and some sort of portable mechanical tool was used. Paper states the near absence of manufacturing errors. This amazing discovery stands a part of the mainstream history of mankind. After all, we are talking about late Stone Age, when hunter-gatherers knew only stone tools. Ceramics had not existed yet, as well as metal tools that are not even known. This kind of skill set, as well as tool set, is far beyond the abilities of the new Stone Age hunter-gatherers and belongs to other civilizations. Civilizations that had machine technologies in ancient Anatolia at least 10,000 years ago. Precise symmetry of the bracelet indicates that technologies similar to the lathe were used. Otherwise, it is impossible to achieve such high quality output. In the research program, the Ashikli Hayuk bracelet is the first object to have been studied among some 60 other high quality artifacts. For example, 10 beads made from cornelian, a material even harder than obsidian, and found in a burial show high technical input in manufacture. Obviously, Neolithic artifacts that were found in the ancient Anatolia can be divided into two simple groups, very highly finished, while others appear much more rudimentary, though it is by no means obvious why this should be. There is no explanation to that anomaly within the mainstream historical approach. But if we conclude that hunter-gatherers coexisted with other highly sophisticated, in a technical aspect, civilization, that could give us an answer why. 
As was mentioned before, the obsidian bracelet from Ashikli Hayuk was not an isolated product, but one of many evidence of using the machine tools in ancient Anatolia. For example, this object from Antakya Archaeological Museum is one of the best examples of the ancient lathe work. Unfortunately, it is unknown as to whether it was a part of the obsidian research program or not. On the macro photograph shots, we see perfectly parallel longitudinal striations that can be seen going parallel to the artifact's edge, as well as multiple high-quality sharp edges of the cut channels on the semi-finished obsidian workpiece surface. Traces of multiple drilling can be seen as well. Such results cannot be achieved by fracturing obsidian with a stone hammer. And for comparison, there is another obsidian bowl with classic pecking and grinding traces achieved by simple stone tools. Another amazing obsidian artifact was found in Neolithic settlement Tepegawa, Iraq. Apparently, this bowl was made of obsidian from a source in central Anatolia and was imported ready-made to Iraq. Pay attention to the precise radial symmetry and quality of the surface. Are there any doubt of the level of technology that was involved in the artifact's manufacture? And now it's time to recall about the curious similarities between ancient Anatolia and South America. Similarities with type, quality and style of the Cyclopean polygonal masonry and also with quality of the obsidian manufacture. It is clear that these obsidian coils from Peru were manufactured using advanced mechanical technologies. The quality of these artifacts is very similar to what we see in Turkey. To the ancient Peruvian artisan, it made no difference what material to cut obsidian or much stronger mountain crystal. The same is true for an ancient Anatolian artisan who had to cut harder cornelian as easy as obsidian as well. Here we have an example of the connection and usage of the same type of technology that belonged to the advanced, in the technological aspect, civilization of the past. The machine tool technology of the stone cut that was not known by hunter-gatherers of the Stone Age 9,500 years ago. We have the evidence of the ancient artifact that was manufactured with such advanced level of expertise that was far beyond the hunter-gatherer's abilities and understanding. Did they have necessary tools and technologies to create such an object 9,500 years ago? The answer is no. They didn't have metal tools and the machine technology to achieve such a high-end result. Which leads us to the conclusion that this is yet another artifact that belongs to the advanced, in the technical aspect, civilization that left a lot of other traces of its presence in a whole region in general.